humans are naturally conservative because we're humans. You grow up being told to work hard for what you got. You don't, you don't grow up being told you're going to get something because you just want it. If you've not seen Uncle Tom, the movie that I executive produced, that Justin Malone directed, and that writer Ansel co-wrote, you're missing out. I just know. Just go to UncleTom.com. I'm you know, watch it. if we had stuck everything we wanted in the film, it would have been a 10-hour film. We got a lot of outtakes. Here's one on the real origins of Uncle Tom. How, how could you be a black man posing for something? Because I'm not led by the nose. I think for myself. Think for yourself. The white man doesn't think for me, the black man doesn't think for me. I don't need Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, and the rest of those clowns. So Trump ain't a clown? No, Trump is not a clown. He's a straight house. Here's I think it's condescending to assume that. My man said, you're a straight house N-word. You are lost. When he answered this question, he said, you're a straight house N-word. You lost. Wow. And it, and it, only, took, it only took three questions or two questions. It only took two questions. For, for him to come up with that. <laughs> I would love to know why the gentleman thought that, man. And I would like to know why the other guy feel the way that he feel. Why he follow or he support Trump the way he support Trump. I would love to know that. I would like to see them two a debate. Because I'm a black man, I'm supposed to vote for a Democrat. Whether it's coming from the media telling me to do it or from a politician telling me to do it, or even from another black person to tell me to do it. You can't, on one hand, say that you're against slavery, but then on the other hand, tell me how to vote, what to wear, how to speak, you know what I mean? How to live my life, because black people are supposed to do these things. They're supposed to vote this way. They're supposed to talk this way. They're supposed to walk this way. They're supposed to uh, believe a certain thing, because that's slavery. You can't say that you're against slavery, but then put me in a box and tell me that I, this is how I have to perform. Yeah, you you me. yeah because you're, you're misrepresenting the people when you do that. <laughs> you're misrepresenting your people when you do that. And if, don't let you become successful. Because if you're becoming successful while doing it, you're definitely an Uncle Tom. According to black people, according to people who look like me, according to people because I've been... According to people that I love that look just like me, that's how that works. Put me in a box and tell me that I, this is how I have to perform. Yeah. You, you called me. You I called me. Call you. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. You did. No, I did. But, say but you can say that. Right. That's his constitutional right. You. you know anything about the Constitution? I, said, I didn't call you. A oh, okay. That, that's a big difference. Right. Yeah, Uncle Tom. I, oh, is that my Uncle Tom? Yeah. To call somebody an Uncle Tom is completely idiotic because if you've read Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin, you'll see that Uncle Tom was actually a, a very good person. He did a lot of good things. He sacrificed on behalf of other slaves who were on the plantation. In many ways, it's, there's, there's a lot of dramatic irony at play with being called an Uncle Tom. When you use the term Uncle Tom to demean someone, being ignorant, not knowing the history of what Uncle Tom means, you know, you're, you're literally just signifying the fact that you yourself are ignorant. After educating myself on the story of Uncle Tom and learning about Josiah Henson, he was a completely good person, completely opposite of what the black community thinks Uncle Tom is. Wow, I did not know that. <laughs> okay, I got some research to do. I got to look into this gentleman. He actually said his real name. We said Josiah Henson. Myself on the story of Uncle Tom and learning about Josiah Henson. Josiah Henson. Josiah Henson. I gotta say his name twice so I can go check him out. He was a completely good person, completely opposite of what the black community thinks Uncle Tom is. Uncle Tom was the hero. <laughs> he was the hero. He was self-sacrificing. And ultimately he paid the ultimate sacrifice for not ratting out the other slaves that had escaped. Uncle Tom was the hero of Harriet Beecher Stowe's novel, Uncle Tom's Cabin, and nobody knows that, so they call us Uncle Tom's to hurt us. And every time I get called, I just go, oof, you should read the book. A lot of black conservatives have kind of flipped the narrative on Uncle Tom. I mean, we embrace it. You know, we say, yeah, yeah, that's me. I'll get into debates with people. They'll call me an Uncle Tom, and I'll say, thank you. I appreciate the compliment. It should be a badge of honor. I wear it as a badge of honor. I, I like to tell people I'm a proud Uncle Tom. This whole scenario is indicative of the problem with the black community. The man who's trying to save the black community is demonized, and the one who's damaging and destroying the black community, a lot of people don't even know him. 
They don't even know the demon in, the, in their own communities. But the one who's helping them, they want to throw you away. What they're actually meaning to call. I like that. I like the way he put that. The one who's helping them, they want to throw, they want to throw you away. And I will add some perspective to um, another side of that. The reason why they want to throw you away is because they believe that you threw them away. They believe that you pick white people over them because they don't see your plan. They don't see your, your reasoning. They don't understand your, your objectivity um, to their side, to their plight. And by there, I mean white people. Black, the black people who look at you as an Uncle Tom, look at anyone who starts to side um, a bit with, um, with conservative values, which actually align with a lot of black values, a lot of ways that we've been brought up. Christian, hardworking, family oriented. I mean, it's, it's many things, but nah, if you're that way, then you're automatically out and we don't want to hear about it at all. Someone is a Sambo, which Sambo was the one who was always telling on the other slaves and telling the master where the slaves are hiding. He wanted to see the slaves get caught in the master triumph. Sambo was who they referred to as Uncle Tom. And uh, then they just switch it to Sambo. They don't, they don't stop and think to say, oh man, all these years I've been saying, wow, I have been kind of brainwashed to a bit to, to see it this way. And they don't, they don't see that. They just completely move Uncle Tom aside and bring in Sambo and now you're Sambo. What's, what's, what's Sambo's real name to Josiah Henson was Uncle Tom and Sambo is obviously um, someone else. His name probably was Sambo something or his last name was Sambo. I want to learn that. Ah, this is good. Now, after we develop a vaccine for the this coronavirus, can we develop one for white guilt? <laughs> I can deal with an honest bigot than I can a patronizing liberal. I can change a bigot faster than I can a patronizing liberal. I'm going to now lead us in an apology from white Americans to African Americans on behalf of our country, um, to you and to your ancestors and uh, to all of your people. So to the African Americans in the room who would uh, wish and be willing to participate in this, please stand up. I saw a clip of Marianne Williamson where she had a bunch of white people. And now I'd like to ask white Americans who are sitting near you. Stand around black people in this church and, and repeat this solemn chant of, I'm sorry, basically, for all the atrocities <laughs> that my people committed against you. On behalf of myself and on behalf of my country. <laughs> to you and all African Americans. I don't understand the fetishization <laughs> of victimhood that white progressives want to put on to the African-American community. I would have felt so uncomfortable, man. Like, no, y'all are not about to surround me like a daggone cult and, and, and put your hands on me and just cover me with all of your, your guiltness. <laughs> we are sorry for what we've done to you, what our ancestors have done to you. We love you and we will protect you. We will do what we have to do to make up for our wrongs, for our ancestors' wrongs. It's like, how dare you think that you are in a level of society where I am? You need to believe in the myth of whiteness and privilege. You need to understand that you're just not gonna be as good as I am in society. For all the oppression and all of the injustices, I apologize. That's what the white progressive burden is. And it's weird, I, I, I will never understand it. Dietrich Bonhoeffer said it best. He said that one of the most difficult human phenomena to confront is not malice, because malice you can confront with violence, it's folly. It's when someone is doing something that they believe to be in your interest. And the more you say to them, you're strangling me to death, oh, but I love you. At their core, <laughs> a white liberal is the ultimate narcissist. That's it. The ultimate narcissist. It's the, the people that adopt 
animals for the purpose of saying I adopted an animal. Like to them, we are we are these pathetic, cute little playthings that they can then take to their friends and say, look at this person that I helped. As we call it, Xena. Wow. You know what's funny? I, well, it's not funny. I actually like seeing uh, Candace in this light, like really addressing like a, 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 an, a, an extremely serious issue like this. Like this is, this is fire. Philic tokenism. They take on the struggles of others so that they deflect away from talking about actual issues. They want so much to be a good white person and to be perceived as a good white person. And if you want to see if a white progressive is a good white person, put him in the room with a black conservative. See how that conversation goes. The biggest challenge to try to figure out whether a white liberal is generally just confused or whether they're a narcissist is simply tell them, no, thank you. That's the test that I say that you should do to all white liberals. Say, actually, no, I don't see myself as a victim. Watch how they react. Because if all you're out to do is help black Americans, you come across a black American that says, actually, like, I'm feeling empowered and I feel great, you should be happy. Oh, man, I'm so happy to hear that. That's great. That's not how they react. They freak out. They block you. I'm blocked by Alyssa Milano. When someone says that they're progressive, they shouldn't automatically be perceived as caring, non-racist, non-bigoted. Most of my experiences of racialized dialogue in a negative way or in confrontations with white progressives who, who I guess hate me because they hate racism. Just yesterday I got a message <laughs> from a white lady saying that I was a disgrace to my race. It was odd to me that a white woman would declare me a disgrace to my race. I get a couple of them that's it, man. Just today, if you ever go to go to LFR Family um, Facebook Live, his LFR Family Live is my Facebook group, and you will see that because I'm checking out the content that I'm checking out. Oh man, ooh, ooh, white progressives don't like me, but they jump to conclusions. I never said that I was daggone. I'm not conservative. I'm not a liberal either. I'm not a Republican and I'm not a liberal. I'm just chasing some daggone truth, man. That's it. And if I and if I can prove that what's what I'm checking out is true, then guess what? That's when I will believe it. That's when I believe it. But don't just think because you you believe you know every damn thing. <sighs> It's, it's just ridiculous. Based on her own stereotypes and preconceived notions of what minorities should think. They sell yep. this idea yep. of tolerance and inclusivity, and we love everyone, and everyone is welcome here, but no, that's not true. We are only welcome there if we believe exactly what you want us to believe. They will act as if for you to rebuff their overtures of sadness or apology is in itself the most despicable crime. Wow. It is because the modern white liberal needs you to be a victim. They have weaponized the notion of being a victim. And various minorities have latched onto that. And that has become the identity that they've taken on. What? I, well, it's very difficult not to take that on if you're a minority especially if the race, I mean, especially if, not the race, especially if the political party that claim to be for you the most are always saying, here, take this, here, take this. You deserve it. You're beat on. You're not good like everyone else. You des you need extra help. You're, you're not going to make it without this. Here, you, you, you should be entitled. We owe you this. Here, take this. Like, nah, I can compete without it. I don't need your damn help. I don't need your handouts. I don't need anything that you're giving me right now. I can compete without it. At some point, my level of education has to stand up on its own, and I should be able to compete as a man. I should be able to raise my family as a man without your help. Now, if you want to help, that's cool. But understand, you're helping because you want to help. You helping because you don't help because help knowing that I don't need your help. How about that? Just, just, and that that will be amazing.
What message is this sending to these white people that are having to go out in their actual lives or their workplaces or whatever and like deal with black people? The message that it's sending to them is that you have to walk on eggshells with this person. This person is going to be a perpetual victim. And I'm going to be too, I'm going to be so afraid to interact with this person as if they're a human being that I'm just not going to interact at all. And I think that that is the real result of all of the woke, explaining, anti-racist, intersectionality crap. Finally, there was a lot of love for President Donald Trump after these young blacks, excuse me, young black Uncle Toms visited the White House. Hello. We love our President thank Trump. You guys, thank yes, you guys. Yes, we do. USA. USA, that was phenomenal. It was great. Amazing. Amazing. Part illegal. It was great. That was the, one of the greatest experiences of my life. I would, I would never forget that. It was wonderful, man. It was beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely. Look at all these uh, Uncle Toms, right? Free-thinking blacks. Fantastic. It was amazing. It's such an honor to have been able to get there and even see the president in person. It was um, amazing. I just met the president, man. He told me I was the flyest guy in the room. It was an honor, thank you. You know, I didn't think I would be here, guy from the streets in the White House. I never would hey. think I'd be one of the first in my family to be invited to the White House as a black man. You know, not too many people can say that amongst black families. You know, so it's good that that actually happened, you know. I made history in my family. Amazing experience, lots of regular Americans getting in there, having an opportunity to share laughs with the President of the United States. It was a great experience. I shook his hand. Awesome. I lost my voice a little bit, so I'm sorry. It was amazing. She had a great time. See the President, see the Vice President. Yes, sir. See many black American conservatives. So it was just lit, it was energy. This is um, our third, this is me and her third time, so. Mm -hmm. Every time we go, President Trump, he's like so funny, and it's just lit, yeah. the energy is amazing every time. You feel warm. Electrifying, like, you, I caught chills. As soon as he came in, the way the, the crowd erupted in there, it was like... The president said we blew his ears out. <laughs> Got a chance to listen to all the things that he's done for the black community, and uh, I'm just grateful for this president. I didn't support him uh, the last election, but after seeing what he's done and that speech he gave in there, he's convinced me I'm voting for him in 2020. He made it very clear that he is here to put America first. You know, we have people suffering here but meanwhile, we're spending so much time and energy devoted towards illegals or people coming to this country unfairly. And, you know, Democrats have made a mess of our inner cities, but he is really trying to root all that mess out and really help people in the ways that are actually effective. Um, Rather than the empty lies and promises that Democrats have been giving, but we haven't had any results. So people are waking up. People are changing. Humans are naturally conservative because we're humans. You grow up being taught to work hard for what you got. You don't, you don't grow up being told you're going to get something because you just want it. I like that humans are naturally conservative. You're taught to work hard for what you want. You're not just going to get it because you ask for it or because you want it. Yeah, young man. Speak, talk, talk your sugar honey iced tea, brother. Talk your sugar honey iced tea. Being taught to work hard for what you got. You don't, you don't grow up being told you're going to get something because you just want it. You saying like you ain't got to work for it? We 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 went when I went in the store, and I tried to get a Snickers and they ain't had no money for it. I'm gonna smack my hand, put that Snickers back. You feel me? We can't afford that. You know what I'm saying? But Democrats they say, hey, we give you everything for free. That ain't reality, cause nothing is free, cause we pay for everything with our taxes. They work for us. It was Donald Trump who woke me up, man. At first, when he was he was nominated and and he was elected, I was not a big fan. But to see the things he's done for the black community, to see the things he's done for America in particular. I'm a huge fan now, and he has my support four more years, and I'll be voting for Donald J. Trump. And, See you there. And, and when he told us, when he asked us, what the hell do we have to lose, I said, that is exactly right. right. Our schools are horrible. Our communities are horrible. We got to do something about uh, we it. We have to do something about it. And he but, is. But I know with him, we're going to make a big change here in America. I think a lot of African Americans are waking up and they're coming to the realization that Trump is great for America. Trump has done so many fantastic things, not only for, you know, what you think the white people or the rich people, but for the black people, for the Asian people, for the Latino people, for everyone. He has done something amazing, and he will keep doing things amazing. And when he is elected in 2020, he will continue to make this country better than it was before. Young man, sheesh, how old is this youngin? How, how, the bigger question is, how did you get lost <laughs> at such a young age, youngin? 
someone told me in 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 the Facebook live um the LFR family um live Facebook group that the Democrats are protecting the rights of our ancestors. The Democrats and what the Democrats stand for and believe in, they're protecting the rights. They're protecting the rights of our ancestors. I it's easy to get excited about our president who is putting your needs first. And that's too often, too often something that we don't hear from the mainstream media, is the way he's trying to help America be the best that it can be. So it was fantastic to be there and, you know, just basically tell him thank you for standing up for us. Because we know that he takes a lot of a lot of hits from the media for us, and we're, we're so happy to support him. You gotta love this man, man. He brings togetherness, man, and that's what it's about. Unity, as Americans, America first, man. The media wants people to think that, you know, the black community hates Donald Trump, but that's not necessarily true. This event is proof, and I know you can say it's a small fraction of, you know, the black population, but they have family members and other people, friends who weren't able to come here, that they, uh, they're ecstatic that they're here. I don't think they're gonna show this. Because they wanna like, like, oh, Trump is racist. They're not gonna show this because they that's not a part of their narrative. They're gonna want to ignore it and, and hope it goes away. That's how they that's how they deal with like an inconvenient uh, a fact. They, they'll bury it, they'll ignore it, or they'll twist it. Because they don't wanna pretty much deal with the truth. And the fact of the matter is, uh, the conservative message resonates with black America. And, you know, as time continues to turn, uh, the Democrats are going to have to reckon with that eventually. The, the little coverage that it seems that we do get in this movement is that we're paid, that we're tokens, that we're not actually believing in the voices that are speaking and that we are being used and paid for by politicians. And that's so, couldn't be so far from the truth. But that is how they like to paint us, specifically black conservatives. They like to deem us as tokens. Instead of just telling the truth, it seems like they're so scared to tell the truth because they know like our community will wake up if they get the truth out there. The media for a long time has um, fooled the black community into believing uh, that Republicans are racist. But when we study our history, we find out that the re it was the Republicans that actually passed the first civil rights bill, and it was the Republicans that abolished slavery. And so now that we're starting to learn for ourselves and think for ourselves, um, you're going to see a lot of more black people voting for Republicans. It's growing every day. You see that on the ground. Please do me a favor and share this. Please share this video. Um, please share this reaction. I don't say this on my other, on, 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 like probably 98% of my reactions. I don't, and I probably should have said this a lot earlier, but please make sure you share this because there's a lot of people who look like me that need to see this. There's a lot of people who don't know that there are people who look like me that believe this. It's, it's important that like, you should show both sides of everything that goes on. And right now, these young people are absolutely correct. The way that they're looked at is like people who are just tokens, who are paid for. They're, they're puppets and, and all these other ways to describe them. Around every day, we see that on our social media every day. We interact with people every day that are waking up, that see this movement happening. You have black conservatives not being scared to come out here and show who they are anymore. And you're gonna have a revolution of young kid, young children out there in the future. They won't be so young anymore. And they're gonna be speaking their mind and they're gonna be speaking the truth. How and they're gonna be proud you, of who younger? they are, conservatives. You can't shut them down. You can't shut them down on the social media and they will always be who they are. And we want all the smoke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You did that. Because you, it pit, pit, pit like that, right? You think you can bully people to stop doing something, right? Usually people run into their little cubby holes after that. But I feel like we, it's a new movement now, and we want all the smoke. It's really clear. You feel me? Like Antifa, they keep bullying people because people allow themselves to get bullied. But see, the difference is we want all the smoke. Yep. You know what I'm saying? People told me not to wear the MAGA hat, so I bought the biggest MAGA hat. Then I bought a bigger one. So next time somebody say something to me, duh, common sense, a bigger one. It's simple math, really, when you put, put it all together. <laughs> so I feel like we started a new movement, and it's a revolution, and uh, we want all the smoke. That's my message, period. My man want all the smoke is what he's saying, period. He want all the smoke. To see Stop Uncle Tom, just go to UncleTom.com. It's going to be far more widely available soon on places like Amazon Prime, so stay tuned. I'm Larry Elder, and we've got a country to save. I'll see you next time. I, so I asked y'all to share this. 
like I said before, 98% of my videos, I don't ask y'all to share this. But there's a great multitude of people who need to see this. And they won't if you don't share. All right? Um, just, I don't I don't know how many of y'all are willing to do it. But that would be lovely if you did. And let me know in the comments if you did. Just say shared or you I got you or something like that. I honestly don't know what to say, man. That was, that was... I already know some debates, some fights are going to ensue from this one right here. But I want to hear what y'all got to say about this in the comments below. And if you have yet to hit that subscribe button, please make sure you do so on your way out the door. Once again, guys, I'm Van. Now we are all the LFR family. I look forward to seeing you on the next video, hopefully inside the Patreon as well. Y'all have been amazing, per usual. Love y'all.